shoot, I didn't get this going yet. All right, so we are going to do some regression today, but first we're going to do a couple warm up problems. You don't have these, so I just need you looking up here and paying attention. What do we need to do? This is on the next quiz again to solve this equation. Okay. And which side is just going to, yeah, the left side is just going to be 4x plus 13. Good. But this right side, what happens when we make square root of x plus 4 multiply by itself? Yes? All right. Square root of x times square root of x would be x. Square root of x times 4 will be 4 square roots of x. And then in the inside here, we have another one of those. And 4 times 4 is 16. Do you remember what the plan was to finish after that? Okay. And because there's a radical, we need to isolate those again. Okay, so if I combine these on the right, I will have 8 square roots of x. Did I lose anybody there? And over here, because I moved the x and the 16, I'll have 3x minus 3. Then what? Anybody? What do I want to do next? Hey, Tristan. we got to square both sides again. So what is 3x minus 3 times 3x minus 3 over there? 9x squared. Um, minus 9x minus another 9x and a plus 9. What happens on the right over here when I square this? It'll be 64 and square root of x squared is just x. All right, we're finally down to something we can deal with that's not going to have to be squared again. All right, we need to make it equal to zero. So I have a 9x squared. What's this going to all come out to, guys? 64, 73, 82? Anybody? Somebody check me because that's probably wrong. Negative 9, negative 9, and negative 64. That's right. Okay. Um, I'm thinking to get 82 in the middle, if we had 9x times 9 and 1x times 1, we'd have 81. And 1 would be 82. Will that work, guys? I think. Okay. So what are the solutions we end up with? we set each of those equal to zero? One ninth or nine, right? All right. That looks really fun to go back and check. Let's do nine first. Four times nine plus 13. Let's be 36 plus 13 would be square root of 49. And over here, we were checking square root of nine plus four. So this would be 3 plus 4 equals 7. Does that seem okay? All right. Then we got a 1 ninth for fun. Somebody type 4 times 1 ninth plus 13 and do a math enter enter. One twenty one over nine. Okay, so if we square root on the left, what's the square root of one twenty one and the square root of nine? Eleven over three. And over here the square root of one ninth would be one third. And there was a plus four that was outside the radical over here. Is four and a third eleven thirds? I don't think that checks, does it? Eleven thirds is like three and something, right? Three and two thirds. So after all that fun, 
we had one solution at nine. All right, great fun. That's on the next quiz again. All right, so is this idea. Anybody know how to draw? If this is the parent function, how do we draw this? Okay, so the first thing we would do would be to flip it down this way somehow. Okay, rough sketch. Then what? Then shift it up four. So it would now be, I don't know, roughly something up here. You could be a lot more accurate if you had to be. All right, and one more of those. What's the difference here? Um, no, but yeah, this says do the order of operations inside the parentheses first. So you shift it up for. I don't know, something like that, and then what? Flip it over the X, which means. This is going to be way down here now and going this way. Okay. I didn't do a very good job, but you get the idea. So the order matters. All right. We are today going to do regressions, but all we did in the past was linear regression, I think, didn't we? Okay. Today we're going to talk about a quadratic regression. What would the data look like if we wanted to use quad reg? What's a quadratic equation graph like, guys? Parabola. So if we had data that was doing this or data that was doing this, we could pick the quadratic regression, which is number five right here. Okay. If we thought we should use cubic, what might it look like? Can you show me with your finger what a cubic does? Just draw it in there for me gonna have some bumps in it right something like this would it be a cubic regression maybe and a power regression just means it's got a monomial term kind of thing and it's growing like this okay so those are the ones we're concerned about today so the other thing that is important when you go to do this question on the quiz you're going to be expected to have saved the equation in Y1 and then used that equation with all the decimal places to make your predicted value at the end of the question. So those of you who have not been doing this, this is going to be a problem. You're going to be off by a significant amount on your answer. All right. So today, this is the first example on your sheet. Let's go ahead and type this in. How do we get there, guys? Do you remember? How do I make this bigger? Nope, not that. So it is just stat and then edit. Everybody good? Remember where those keys were? Okay, so what do we have to type in? One through ten first in list one. Okay. Managed to do that in a timely manner. List two, this will take me forever. Okay. So list two, we're putting in this list of numbers. 18, 20.5. I assume everybody's doing this, right? Did anybody not have a list one and list two? All right, we'll pull this up and see if I got them in right. Yep, I messed up somewhere already. 
Oh, I got this one in twice. That look right? Anybody? 20 .5, 20 .1, 20.5, 21.3, 21.1, 19.9, 17.8, 15.9, 11.3, 7.6, 3.7. Is that check in? Okay. The next thing we need to do is to turn the stat plot on. Does anybody remember how that goes? Okay. Are you ready to try this? You know what? Um, we're going to have to turn on the regression or the correlation coefficient too eventually. Let's just keep going though. Um, to turn this plot on, it's second y equals. Do you see above the y equals it says stat plot? Okay. And we want to hit enter to turn a plot on. I'm just going to go ahead and do plot one. And my X list is going to be list one and my Y list is going to be list two. Does anybody need to fix that? Should say list one and list two. And we just want a scatter plot. So it's the first choice. So if I needed to, I'd go down, enter, down, second, one to get list one, down, second, two to get list two. Then you can set it to any mark and any color if you're using the color at all. All right. You might want to just hit Y equals and make sure you don't have anything in here. You don't want anything in your Y equals, but this plot should be on at the top. All right. Then anybody remember, you have to set a window, but do you remember the cheater method to set a window in this? When we put in a list of data, we can do zoom stat because we used the stat, right? We used the list of data. So zoom nine. Okay. Who needs help? Everybody got it on the first try? I'd be glad to help somebody. Okay. And then just do your Zoom 9 again. Did it work? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what out of those we talked about might this fit? Which regression does it seem like it might work? Yeah, a, a parabola going down. Okay. So here we go. You ready to try this? Everybody needs to be doing this. Stat, right arrow, because we're going to calculate a regression. Which one did we pick? Okay, we're going to pick the quadratic because we thought it looked like a parabola. So go down to choice five or just type a five. And then we want it to make sure we're using list one and list two again, but we want to store our equation. If you have an older calculator, you have to do second one comma second two comma y1 to store it in y1, or at least put the y1 at the end so that it stores. Um, on this calculator, I'm going to scroll down here. Now, how do you get the y1? Remember this? You're going to be required to do this for the first time. It's under vars, which is next to clear. Now, what are we trying to find? Y, so we got to go over to the right. We are in function mode, so we just hit enter. And then you can start anywhere you want. I'm just going to hit enter and put it in Y1. Enter one more time to calculate. Okay. Um, you get a Y squared here. Are mine turned on? Did everybody get 
I really don't care about the regression here. I just want to look at whose isn't working. The R squared isn't important if you don't have it. Is that all you don't have? Okay. If if you wanted to turn it on, guys, on my calculators from the back wall, under mode, you can go down to stat diagnostics and just hit on. Okay. So if you went here on enter and then you went back to the home screen and just hit enter you'd have the r squared but it's really not important all right does everyone see where if we start rounding this we're cutting off a whole bunch of decimals right okay so we're gonna we could write down on our paper something with the decimals rounded but if we go to y equals it has stored all those decimals in so that if we go to graph, get a pretty darn good fit. All right, and then it's gonna ask us to make a prediction. And we're gonna use either the table or the ask auto. Let's see what they want us to do here. All right, if I go to the next slide, it says write a polynomial function. Okay, let's go ahead and round just to fill this in. Be careful, it says this is our function, and we're going to put in this A, B, and C. It says round to the nearest thousandths. How many decimal places is that? Three. So we'd have A would be negative, don't miss the negative there, 0 0.409 x squared plus B, which is 2.0. 762x plus c, which is 16.267 if we round to three places. And I don't care about this. I'm not going to ask you the correlation coefficient because some of them don't have correlation coefficients. All right. Use the model to estimate the flow rate at 10.5. All right, I'd like to go back and talk about this. This was an oil tanker collides with another ship and starts leaking oil, okay? So it's leaking and it reaches a peak and then as the oil flows out of the ship, it gets less and less, okay? So the question is, when did we... When was the flow 10.5? All right, now there's two ways you could do that on your calculator. You could go um, to the table, but only if your table was counting by halves, because otherwise 10.5 isn't on here. Does anybody remember how we let it, told, had it let us put a number in for the table? It's under second window maybe, yes. Remember what we did here? We made it ask auto. So second window, scroll down and make the first one ask and the second one auto, then go second graph to go to the table. And now we can put in what we want, which is 10.5. Now, I got 0.1698 or 0.17. We round, everybody good? Okay. So the flow is about 0.17 liters per hour. Is that what the label was back here? Oh, this was hundreds of liters per hour. Wait, one seven hundreds of liters per hour? Well, it's hundreds. I'm not worried about it. Okay, here's my question. Um, would we have gotten the same answer if we'd put it into this rounded equation? Can someone try that? We're putting in a 10.5, remember? So if we typed negative 0.409, 
times 10.5 squared plus 2.762 times 10.5 plus 16.267. I would have rounded this answer to 0.18. I just want you to show that it does matter if you use this equation or the saved one. Did everybody get like 0.1757 when you put it in or not? Anybody? I tipped the, sorry here. I put 10.5 into this equation and I got 0.17575. Did anyone get that or did I type it in wrong? You got that, Zoe? Okay. So it would have rounded to 1 eighth. So I will be able to tell if you've used the short, short equation, okay? All right, part B says use the model to determine when it was about a thousand liters. A thousand liters per hour would be 10 hundredths, 10 hundreds of liters, right? This is confusing me. Um, so they want us to graph the line y equals 10 and see where they intersect. So if we went down to y2 and put in just the line 10, and we found the intersection, second trace, intersection, I got about eight and a half hours. and a half hours till the flow is down to about a thousand liters per hour. See, we needed to do something with this hundreds of liters. So 18 was actually 1800. So 0.17, move it over hundreds too. So this is actually about 17 liters per hour we had moved this correctly back here. Because these all should be moved over two places if you were taking off that part of the label. Anyway, all right. Moving on to example two. I don't give you a confusing label on the quiz. All right. Can you try typing these in list one and list two? But this time, okay, it's not going to be quadratic. So let's type these in and see what we get. Do you remember how to clear list one and list two without doing any crazy? By the way, you also want to clear out everything in your y equals. Anybody have a question? So stat, enter, and then to clear out the list, you can go up on the title, but remember it's not delete, it's clear, enter, to clear them all out at once. All right, please do this because we're not doing quadratics this time, and you need to know where all of these different regressions are. I wish these weren't so long of lists. Every year I say I'm going to edit this worksheet and I don't. So this is talking about as a planet gets further from the sun, you're trying to figure out how long it, how many days it takes to complete an orbit. Anybody know which one is the Earth? Yeah, the 365, what do you know?
All right, everybody faster than me. How do we go to look at the new snap plot? It's not going to work until we do what? There's a chance I didn't make a mistake. There's probably swimming. But if I just graph right now, I don't see diddly. Why is that? I didn't fix the window. Do you remember how we fixed the window? Zoom nine all over again. Anybody else's look like this? Okay. We could probably do a parabola and it wouldn't fit this badly. Okay. But I will tell you which one to use on the quiz. You don't have to necessarily choose on the homework. It does say choose. So this time the directions say use power regression. Okay. This one's a little hard to find. Anybody having trouble with their graph? To get it? Anybody else need help? The graph isn't working? All right. So we're going to go to stat right arrow to list the calculated ones. And I don't see power on this screen. So what do I have to do? This little arrow over here indicates that if we scroll down, we'll see some more. Did you find the power regression? Okay. It's A right here, power regression. All right, so then I hit enter. I want to make sure it's list one and list two, and I want to store it in Y1 again. So I arrow, 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 and how do I get there? Bars, arrow to the right, enter, enter. Okay, enter, enter to calculate. Okay then you can just do the store. It's gonna assume list one and list two, okay? So you can just right now go um, to the VARS key next to clear, and then arrow to the right to Y VARS, and then hit enter twice. Now, does it say Y1 on your screen? And then when you hit enter and calculate it, now if you go to y equals is it saved there go to y equals okay anybody else having trouble getting it to save because you have a different calculator <laughs> dakota you know how to save it on yours to the y1 jada you're good chadwick you're getting it to save in y1 anybody else okay um, if I go back, I quit out of this and go back to the home screen. Just kidding. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to hit enter again so that it's there. All right. Good fit. Yes. If we graph, beautiful. It's hitting them all, right? So if I quit again and go to the home screen, I don't know why it keeps getting rid of this. Okay. We need to write this down. How are we going to write that down on our paper? It says y equals a times x to the b. So we're going to write what? 367 point whatever, okay? 367.3, does it say thousandth again? So 2, 3 if we round. And then we're using this here, it says X, so we put an X, and then it says to the power of B, so our exponent power is B, which is just, well, I suppose if we wrote it and we rounded, it would be 501, right? Roughly 1.5 power or the three halves, we did a fraction. It's like a square root to the third. All right. Again, the quiz, I'm pretty sure, doesn't ask the correlation coefficient, but it's a crazy, they actually are. Is anybody still not showing the R's? Moira, did you get yours turned on? If you're not showing the R's, go to mode. As long as you have an 84 plus and scroll down here and where it says diagnostics, make sure it says on, not off. 
just hit enter and then you should be able to quit and if you hit enter again it should be there good anybody else have a question okay do we have to predict something on this one no goes right to the next question okay so this time yes all right put these in list one and list two Following table shows the amount of energy produced and the amount of energy expended to produce the food. Okay. So, amount of food energy produced by farms increases as more energy is expanded. So, we're going to put this in list one and this in list two. And this time, we're going to use the cubic regression. All right. I'm actually going to go out and put these in different lists on mine because I don't want to have to type them over every hour today. All right, so if I wanted to do mine, since I turned it in a different stop, spot here, I stored them in five and six. So if you do a zoom nine, I don't know, see if this is, is that what anybody's getting? Or is mine messed up? I could have oh, typed boy. something in wrong. That's what yours looks like? Okay, so, I picked cubic because it seemed to kind of have a little wiggle in there. So we're going to go stat, right arrow, where's cubic? Yes, down to choice six here, the cubic regression. Now I have to change this to list five and list six because that's where I stored them, but you don't have to. All right, I do want to store the new equation in Y1, which is good because it'll go right over the top of the old one that I never erased. All right, did anybody get this? This is a lot to write down. It says AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D, and it gives us a whole bunch of numbers. What's everybody going to do wrong with A and B? A and B are both in scientific notation, right? They're teeny tiny little numbers. All right. Um, uh, yes. Okay. All right. So let's see what I messed up in my list. If I read them, please check me. 606, 970, 11, 21, 12, 27, 13, 18, 14, 55, 1636, 20, 30, 31, 82, 20. This one should be, somebody check in my second list while I fix this one. This should be 2182. Well, now I messed it up again. My other one's right? Okay. So if I just go back to the home screen and hit enter again, is this what you got? Yes. Okay. So now we have to write that down somehow. All right. So this is what we got, I think. You want to leave it in scientific notation when we write it down, or do you want to write out all the zeros? Let's just do scientific notation. Okay, so it would be y equals a would be negative 
3.87 times 10 to the negative 8. Is everybody interpreting with me? I just rounded to two places. Well, it would round even to three. All right, and that goes in front of the x cubed. Then it says plus b. Well, what's b? 1.53 times 10 to the negative 4. And that's an x squared. And then it says plus c, but c is negative 0.136. And that one gets an x. And then plus d, which is 167. And I'm just rounding it to 167 because I'm out of room. I don't know where you started, but I way ran out of room. And I thought I started in pretty good shape. Did you run out of room? Yeah. There, I got it all in one line now. Okay. Huh? You can't fix that in your paper? Okay. Predict the energy output when the energy input is 800. So is an input an X or Y up here? The X. So we need to, thank you so much. We need to put in 800 into the X list or into our equation is what we're supposed to do. So if I go back to the calculator, is it still in Ask Auto, guys? Let's make sure I've stored it. Ooh, lovely. Look at there, stored it all in there, okay? So now when I go to the home screen, no, I don't want to go to the home screen. I want to go to the table. Just kidding. What do I want to put in here? 800. And you can type it over the old one. I got 136-ish. Anybody else get 136? So if the energy input is, one, is 800 calories, the output we got is about 136 calories. All right, so what's going to happen in the quiz is I'm going to give you a list, two lists of numbers. You're going to have to be able to type it in. I will tell you which regression equation to use, quadratic, cubic, power, and then you're going to have to use it to make a prediction. And when you use it to make the prediction, it's got to be stored. All right, I'm not going to start 4B. But these are the questions you need to do tonight. But we'll leave off the finish worksheet 4B parts. So some of these are regression, and then some are what we did last week when we started 2.2. Yeah, this is out of the book. Okay, what numbers were assigned, guys? Anybody got the list? 43 is the first one. Okay, 43 is a regression. It looks like this. What are you going to want to put in instead of the month? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Be careful, they skip June. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, they skip October to 7, 8, 9, 11, and 12. And then once you figure out a model, you're going to have to go back and put in a 10 to predict October. These three, you just type them in. There's no application. I don't know. I think you have to do a couple of these, don't you? What's at the end of the list? Anybody have it still? These just ask yes or no, is it a polynomial function? So, 
Um, these. Is this assigned tonight? Okay. All right. This section, what it's asking guys is to write a polynomial function where n is the degree. And this is the only real zero. So how could I write an x cubed that has a zero at three? It would look like this, right? And if it's cubed, I could just do that. There's other ways. There's not only one answer. Okay. Let me pick this one over here. How would I make this a degree five? X minus two, X minus one, X minus four. Right now it's degree three. How can I make it degree five? Could I throw a square down a couple of those? Now is it degree five? I have an X squared, an X squared, and an X. Now it's a degree five, okay? But it has only three real zeros. Anybody remember what it's doing when it has a degree two there? So at two, it's degree two, so it's bouncing. Do you remember this from last week? At one and at four. Degree five would come from down here. We said it bounced at one, it bounced at two, and then it crossed. Uh, I did something wrong. At four. Degree, oh, why isn't it? Oh my goodness. Let me try that again. It came up, it bounced at one, it bounced at two, and then it crossed at five. There's the degree five. All right, so just to help you with the homework.